Welcome back to the Marching to Madness College basketball podcast this morning with Utah State head coach Ryan Odom. He checks in as he has won around 22 games per season in the last five years. And I know you remember him well from UMBC back in 2018 when they knocked Virginia a one seed out of the first round of the NCAA tournament. His Aggies are 5-0 and right now, and they play Utah Tech Thursday night. Coach Odom, welcome back. Hey, thank you. I appreciate you having me back on. Oh, it's great always – Oh, great to see you too. Yes, it's always a pleasure. Now, you you went 18 and 16 last season, 18 wins at the first year uh, anywhere, I think, is a a big number because you've got to rebuild and, and, you know, remake and all that. As you work to establish your tradition with the Aggies, what did you put in place where you could win that many? Yeah, I mean, I think it all starts with our, our leadership. Um, you know, we had two seniors back um, in Brock Miller and Justin Bean, you know, who had won a lot of games, you know, here at Utah State. And, you know, we relied heavily on them and their leadership each and every day. And, and, uh, and, and it was really neat to kind of mesh, intermesh, you know, the, some new faces, some obviously Brandon Horvath and RJ Idlerock came with us from UMBC. And then, and they'd won a lot of games there too, as well. And so to connect the to the two worlds, you know, was was very rewarding for us. But you know, all the credit goes to those guys, you know, for you know accepting our coaching staff, you know, into their uh, program here and tradition of excellence that has existed. I mean, you go back in history, Utah State basketball, it's uh, it's it's hefty, hefty. Uh, um, you know, excellence, you know, is really what it's all about. You know, the tradition of excellence that has existed here for a number of years uh, is a tribute to all the former players and coaches that, you know, have either walked sidelines or or been out on the court, you know, uh, working hard for the Aggies. And so we're just proud of the, proud of the opportunity and and happy to, to have the opportunity here at Utah State. Sure. Hey, one of the things I've noticed, and I, I study stats and all that stuff, this is really interesting. You guys make 12.8 threes per game. That's second in college basketball. And you allow nine, which is 322. How, how do you, how do you uh, coalesce and make up for those on offense and defense? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously, you know, we're we're we've been shooting the ball pretty well so far this season, and you know, that's a tribute to the guys' work all summer. Uh, that was an area of of uh, focus for us, you know, going into this season, and and really fit after we finished last season, we weren't we weren't horrendous, you know, shooting the basketball. But had we shot it better, you know, in conference play last year, we felt like you know, we would have had a better, better result and, and a better chance at the NCAA tournament, you know, had we done that. Um, it didn't happen. And uh, I think our guys are, are definitely early in the season so far, you know, focused on making shots. You know, it's a different story trying to keep others from making shots. And, you know, we've run into some really good teams, some hot teams at times, you know, that have made some tough ones. And then they've also gotten some where, you know, we, uh, you know, we didn't do a great job guarding. And so, you know, it's a learning process, you know, going through this early, early season, you know, at this point to try to figure out, you know, what's the best way for, you know, our team to give itself the best chance to win, to play. I was going to ask about that, actually. How do you game plan to search for the three ball and three point shooters on the perimeter? Yeah, I mean, I think it's certainly, you know, drive and kick and making those 0.5 decisions that we all, all yeah. coaches talk about, you know, it's not not allowing the ball to, to become very stagnant. Uh, if it becomes a one-on-one game, you know, it's harder, you know, to get the shots that you want. And, and we just try to each and every day develop a trust, you know, with one another that, you know, hey, the open guy a lot of times is the go-to guy. Uh, it doesn't mean that we don't run sets to get specific shots or what have you, but the responsibility at that point is on the play, the individual player who we've run the play for to make the right basketball play. And so mm-hmm. we try to coach our guys every single day on that. We're very fortunate in that, 
you know, our guys have bought into the, an unselfish style of basketball. And, uh, you know, it's it, at times it can be really fun to watch. And, um, sure. you know, it certainly is, is a fun way to, to play. Yeah, I love I love that style and, and, and the pace and everything that, you know, kind of folds together. Uh, mm-hmm. You've got Stephen Ashworth. He's getting 19 points a game. He's shooting 55.6% from three and making four of those per game. Uh, talk a little bit about him, how he finds his shot, and how confident and comfortable is he in his style of game? Yeah, no question. I mean, I think, you know, we have a team this year that, you know, is pretty deep. You know, we mm-hmm. feel, you know, going into the season and, and, you know, a lot of interchangeable parts. And we are the majority of our guards are back, Stephen being one of them uh, mm-hmm. from last season. You know, we lost uh, Brock Miller, Brandon Horvath and Justin Bean, kind of our three, four, five. And we lost Brock early in the year, right before conference really started. So our team got used to playing without him even last year. So it's really more, you know, Bean and Brandon. And we've recruited, you know, quite nicely. We feel like, you know, up front, you know, we've we've been able to replace them. And then the guys that are back up front as well, like Trevin Dorius, have gotten better. And, you know, our guards have really improved. Steven being being right there is 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 one of the most improved players for us. You know, Steven's one thing I've always said about Steven, he's got, you know, Moxie. That's the first thing you know notice about him and and the confidence level that he has in his own abilities. Uh, is evident and you know he's willing to sacrifice right now he's coming off the bench for us and uh and and is our sixth man he comes right in you know three four minutes into the game and and uh you know finishes the majority of the games and and uh you know has has made some big plays so far this season for us and our team and uh really proud of, of what he's been able to do so far early in the season yeah, Taylor Funk, uh, 3.8 threes per night. Uh, talk about how you attack with those two players together on the floor and then what type of defenses do you see ge- generally, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you're going to see all different kinds of defenses. I mean, I think, you know, when you're playing against shooters of that caliber, I mean, the best way to guard them is to not allow them to get it off. Because sure. uh, then if they get it off, you're running the risk of, of a potential make there. And so, you know, for us, it's it's all about, you know, continuing to try to find the right shot for Utah State. And and those two guys understand that, that it's it's uh, they don't need a lot of time to get it off. And so, you know, you know, defenses will switch. They'll hedge hard. They'll step out and try to try to take away. They'll chase them off of screens. And, you know, then at times that can open it up for other guys as well. And so, you know, I think the balance of our offense is, is, uh, you know, extremely important as we continue along this, this season and, and uh, head into Mountain West play as we get to January. Oh yeah. Daniel Aiken uh, is off the bench in the post and it's 68.8% and 12.4 points. Uh, and he and Funk are your top two rebounds. Yeah, no question. I mean, certainly rebounding was an area that, you know, a focus for us. We wanted to recruit uh, to that. We wanted to recruit to shooting. We wanted to recruit to defense. And, you know, Dan provides us, you know, with two of those three. Funk, you know, provides us with, with you know, pretty much all three of those as well. I think he's an underrated defender. Um, but he does rebound. I mean, he had one game. I think he had 14. Uh, you know, he certainly shoots the basketball. You know, but he's more than that. He's an all-court player. He's a guy that, you know, can really pass the ball as well and, and really fits into our system uh, extremely well. And Dan, obviously, we're familiar with Dan and his his game and how he's developed over four years. He played for us at UMBC and uh, went on to Cal Baptist last year and had a great season for them, almost averaged a double-double. And, you know, to have him be able to finish it out here at Utah State with us is really special. And he's gotten off to a great start for us uh, and really helped us, you know, in a big way. The defensive structure and stature of this team is interesting as well because you only allow 39.2% from the floor in general. Yeah, no question. It's been a focus for us and, and, you know, guarding the rim, guarding twos, forcing tough twos. 
uh, and then guarding the three point line. If you can't guard the three point line, you know, in college basketball, you're probably going to have trouble um, unless you're matching them, you know, at this point. And so that's an area of improvement for us that we're, we're looking to get a little bit better at. You know, certainly turning the basketball over when you play a free flowing style offense, you're going to have some turnovers at times. Uh, but, you know, we've we it's certainly an area that where we can get better and uh, expect to get better as well. But, you know, pleased with our progress so far. But, you know, it's 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 quite early in the season for all of us. We're learning a ton about our teams, you know, as we go through this November and what's now going to become, you know, December here, month here of, of college basketball. Sure. Uh, the depth in the Mountain West, I've always thought, has been uh, superior. I was I was really happy when they moved the tournament up a week. I was going to ask if that's still going to happen. And then, as we're talking about the depth of the league, getting four NCAA tournament bids last year was huge. I yeah, no question. Uh, the depth in the Mountain West right now is, is evident. Um, you know, as you go down and you look at, at the starts for – you know, all of the, uh, all of our conference, um, it, it's been really, it's been really uh, positive. Um, obviously you start with San Diego state, you know, they're off to a dynamite start, you know, playing in a big time tournament out in Maui and fair and extremely well, um, you know, had, had several competitive games out there and, and uh, had a big win over Ohio state. Uh, you go around the league. I mean, obviously Wyoming's had a couple of, of injuries with EK and that's, you know, yeah, that changes, you know, things a little bit for them, but uh, hopefully they'll get him back here soon. And obviously they, they've got a dynamite team and are, are extremely well coached. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the other, all the other teams have done great as well. I mean, San Jose State's off to a great start. Nevada's off mm -hmm. to a great start. UNLV's undefeated at this point. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Colorado State, uh, you know, is always, you know, formidable as is Boise State. And so, no, I'm probably leaving somebody out, but, you know, the depth in our league is evident and all great coaches, good people and mm -hmm. uh, great players throughout the league, you know, that we all could be proud of. And so, you know, this time of year, we're all pulling for one another to, to do our best and, and represent our conference the right way. And I think we're off to a good start with that. Good start. Yeah. Last thing, Coach Odom, um, I've been asking everybody that comes on here this question. The NCAA tournament, there's rumors of expansion, you know, above 68. How do you feel about that? And then how do you think would be a good way to, you know, to, to proliferate that should they decide to do it? Yeah, I'm not sure what the best way to go about that would be. I've always, I always feel bad when, you know, because I've coached in those one bid leagues where, you know, a team wins the regular season and then, you know, doesn't win that that three day in March, you know, conference tournament and they're not able to go to the NCAA tournament. And that's a big blow, you know, to a team. I mean, when we when we beat Vermont in that last game and Vermont obviously was an NCAA caliber team, you know, that particular season. And I'm not sure exactly where their numbers fell, but. I mean, a dynamite year, you know, they had. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's always unfortunate to see those those teams not make it. Um, but, you know, I, I would probably, if we were going to expand, I would probably start there uh, before going going elsewhere. And I realize there's outliers there, sure. um, you know, where, you know, a team wins the regular season but doesn't have, you know, they don't, they don't have 26 wins or whatever it is, um, you know, for that particular season. But – you know, I'm all for student athlete experience and, you know, the tournaments, it's an unbelievable, uh, you know, three weeks and it's the best. You know, extending, extending that and allowing more student athletes the opportunity to experience that. I know mm -hmm. what it meant to our guys at UMBC. I know what it's meant to the players here that are fortunate enough to play in it at Utah State, you know, in years past. And it's just a special, special thing. And so. Yeah, uh, I'm. I would be all for it if they were they were uh, open to expanding it. But again, that's above my pay grade. I don't. I don't have to worry about that. We just have to play the season we're 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 afforded right now. Yep, Coach Ryan Odom, ladies and gentlemen, marching to madness. Always a pleasure, Coach. I enjoy talking to you, and I wish you the best there in the Mountain West this uh, January and February. All right, Ken. Thanks so much for having me on. Take yeah, care. Thank you. Yeah, you take care as well.